Uh, and good afternoon, everybody joining us from all around the world. Um, I'm Patrick here from uh, Wisdom. I'm super happy uh, to have you around at our uh, first Tableau webinar of the year, where we'll talk about uh, Tableau cloud migration, of course, uh, moving from Tableau server to Tableau cloud, uh, the why and the how uh, to migrate and the best practices. Just before we start, um, please do not hesitate to submit your questions at any time in the uh, Q&A uh, box interface. We'll make sure to answer your questions uh, at the end of this session. Uh, this session is, of course, um, recorded as always. It will remain available um, on LinkedIn and you'll be able to access it offline later on and distribute to colleagues. And at the end, um, there'll be a very short um, exit survey. Uh, please, uh, Please take a few seconds to answer it. Always help us to see where we uh, where we can do better and where we've done uh, um, according to expectations. So we have three uh, topics on the agenda today, and I'm lucky to be joined by three great speakers. Um, first one is with um, Alexandra, who will talk to us about why you should migrate to Tableau Cloud. Hello, Alexandra. Hello. How's it going? It's great to be here. Well, I'm happy to have you around. So maybe you would, you'd like to say a few words about, about yourself? Yes. So I am Alexandra caldwell Lennon. I'm a Senior Director of Product Management for Tableau. And I lead our enterprise growth and um, our Tableau Cloud Enterprise Growth Team. So we look at what our enterprise customers are going to need as they look at moving to the cloud. We also cover compliance, migrations, and a variety of uh, strategic interactions and interfaces with Salesforce as we grow together. Well, that's awesome and uh, really nice to have you around, especially to step in um, at the last minute from Scott Smith, who's one of your colleagues, uh, Tableau Cloud Product Manager, um, but stuck uh, in the snow <laughs> in his airplane uh, traveling back from somewhere. So uh, um, nice to have you around. Thank you. Um, just next to me um, in the London office, I'm glad to be joined by uh, Benny Clive, uh, who is a former CDO at Jaguar Land Rover, and he talked about his uh, experience um, of doing this exact project, moving from Tableau Server to Tableau Cloud. So, um, Benny, nice to have you. And Keith, for having me, Patrick. So tell us a bit uh, about, us about yourself. Sure, so uh, I was at Jaguar Land Rover for six years, the last two years as Chief Data Officer. Um, I'm quite excited to talk about this today because uh, I commented on LinkedIn two, three weeks ago that this was one of the projects that helped accelerate my career to become a CDO. It really helped to deliver a lot of value at JLR, so happy to share that story today. Uh, I left in uh, October to focus on becoming a dad, and I'm now working on a startup. Well, congratulations on being a new dad, and congratulations on starting your new startup. What's the name of your startup? Uh, that's not open in the public. Oh, it's not open to the public. Well, watch this space. <laughs> um, and finally, um, at the end of this session, before the q and I'll show you how wisdom can help accelerate, lower the risk, um, and automate um, your, your testing when you're going to migrate to uh, Tableau Cloud. So uh, thanks to our solutions, Wisdom Ops. Okay, um, Alexandra, over to you. All right, so thank you again. Um, Think we're going to talk a little bit about migrating from Tableau Server to Tableau Cloud. And again, I'm the backfill for Scott Smith, uh, his lovely picture is down in the lower corner here. And thank you for joining us as we go through. Hopefully, you'll have some really wonderful questions and we're able to answer those as well. But again, always delighted to come and talk about uh, migrations. All right, so with Tableau Cloud, there's a wide variety for why our customers are looking at moving from Tableau Server to Tableau Cloud. And a lot of those are around strategic initiatives and how it aligns with the goals within their organization. Um, one of the things that we're seeing is that a lot of leaders are very, very interested in making sure that their, their employees are more data-driven. Um, and in our research, it's one of the things that about 83% of CEOs are really looking for. And so for a lot of our customers, they're looking at how do we make sure that our employees are more data-driven? How do we offer um, our analytics more broadly within the organization? And then also, how does it align with initiatives that they have, like reducing their cost of infrastructure maintenance and managing it themselves? 
um, to be able to reuse those resources on more strategically initiative, um, more strategically valuable projects within the organization. Um, additionally, Tableau Cloud is our most innovative platform that's available for our customers. It's where we're spending a great deal of effort, not only on how we add things like natural language processing and AI and ML, but also how do we look at how we integrate with Salesforce and allow our, our customers to have access to more of their data in more places uh, as they're working just as a, an organization broadly. And then again, going back to the reduction in operational costs and challenges, it's one of the things that um, our customers tend to see a pretty uh, significant inc or decrease in their costs. Um, it looks like it's about 30 to 40% for some of them in terms of their reduced IT overhead. And so that's something that as our customers are thinking about how they prepare for the future, how do they um, position themselves to be able to go after more innovative initiatives, it's one of those things that's valuable for them as well. And then again, Tableau Cloud is always available. One of the very valuable things about it is that you no longer have to worry about your upgrades. That's one of the most, probably the leading reason that customers end up talking to me about how they move from Tableau Server to Cloud, Tableau Cloud is that they've been going through an upgrade process for years within their organization and have finally gotten to the point where they're like, we're very tired of managing this or we have outsourced it to somebody else and that experience wasn't what we were hoping it to be. So basically, how do we get away from that upgrade process and making sure that things are always functioning? And so Tableau basically says, it's okay, don't worry about it go ahead and move to Tableau Cloud and we'll take care of that process for you. That way, everything is always up, it's always available. We have SLAs of 99.9%. Uh, your employees are able to access their data from anywhere. Uh, it really makes it a much more predictable and performant experience for a lot of our customers. Um, as they're moving from Tableau Server to Tableau Cloud, one of the things that I always think is a fascinating thing for some of our customers to go through is they will sit down and look at, well, what was the performance like on Tableau Server and what was our performance like on Tableau Cloud? And for some of the customers that we've sat down and, and literally gotten stopwatches out for, we're able to go through that and they see where now their performance and the, the time to upload something, or sorry, for it to, to load, is a third of what it used to be. And so for those customers, when they start to think about how does this apply at scale across their organization, it just makes them that much more um, able to get their data more quickly. It makes everyone more performant across the organization. And it's something that they really find a lot of value in. Uh, and then finally, operational agility. Um, again, as everyone's able to get their data more quickly, they don't have to spend time making the system work and managing it and operating it on their own, now they're able to focus on other things. So they can spend time on the analytics and not making sure that it's up, not worrying about their cloud infrastructure. Um, they also don't spend as much time on support cases. Roughly, our customers who have moved from Tableau Server to Tableau Cloud spend about a quarter of the time um, or get a quarter of the, the cases that they had before, simply because they're not having to manage their own deployments. And so they're able to go through this process in a much more efficient way, and they can really focus on the data and their analytics, as opposed to having to focus on their deployments. And let's see. Oh, another really important thing that I should mention is that roughly a third of the customers that we have on Tableau Cloud have come from Tableau Server. So it is really a thing that as we are seeing the growth in Tableau Cloud and seeing a lot of excitement about it, we're not just seeing it from new customers, we're getting a lot of it from customers who have been on server and have gone through the life of, of, of that experience with us and go, hey, we really would like to be on the latest and greatest, so can we come to the cloud as well? Um, so that's one of the things that we always find very exciting. So as you think about moving to the cloud, what are some things that you need to consider? And it's, it's one of those things that as you think about your organization, it's really important to consider what is your data strategy, uh, generally speaking, or as we like to say, all up. 
And what becomes really important about this is one of the things that we see is that a lot of our customers will move from Tableau Server to Tableau Cloud at the same time when they're making other cloud changes uh, within their organization. So a lot of times they'll change their data sources at the same time, or they have just recently changed their data sources and are maybe in a more cloud-based infrastructure there and then kind of go, okay, well, this is a good moment for us to think about how do we move to the cloud all over or across the board so that it's easier to manage, um, our customers have access to their data in a more easy to access kind of way. And so it usually becomes a part of a more holistic strategy, not always, but that is one of the things that we see that as customers are kind of going, while well, we're in there um, remodeling the house, so to speak, we might as well change this room as well. Uh, another thing to consider is the content and what kinds of content you have, how your customers are accessing it, um, what is your most valuable content that you want to bring over to the cloud. Uh, again, I really love using the analogy of like moving houses because sometimes you find that you don't necessarily want to bring everything over from your old house, that there's things that are very old or don't make sense or weren't maybe structured in the way that made the most sense for your organization. And so now this is a great moment to kind of clean house and say, okay, we're not going to bring that content with, over with us, but the content that is being used regularly within the organization, that's the most valuable, that those are the things that we're absolutely going to bring over and that we absolutely want to make sure that those things are functioning the way that we would like them to when they land over into the new world. Um, it's also really important to consider basically how you had things structured potentially on Tableau server, how your, 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 your members and your users had access to that information and making sure that you're structuring it in a similar way on Tableau cloud so that they're going to have a more seamless experience and be able to get access to their most important information. Um, and then also there's some elements around users and authentication, provisioning licenses. Um, and that varies a little bit depending on your organization and how you had those things provisioned and the kinds of um, license structure that you had on Tableau Server and as you look at Tableau Cloud. Um, it's one of the things that is often um, more valuable for our customers as they come over to Tableau Cloud because they're able to allow their users to get access to stuff more easily, potentially, depending on how they were doing it on Tableau Server. Uh, and then along with that, the change management parts. If you've made any significant changes to um, the way that your data is being accessed or who has access to that data, being able to cascade that information throughout your organizations so that when your users come over, they're able to start using their data as quickly as possible right away. Um, they have as seamless a, an experience as possible, or if there are new things or new features, as is often the case for them to get access to, how you can cascade that information within your organization so that they're getting value out of that as well. And then for testing, things that people love to consider are around um, how do we make sure that that experience that we had on Tableau Server is now exactly the same on Tableau Cloud with regards to our workbooks. And we'll talk about that in a little bit uh, as well. Uh, but also how do you make sure that it's as performant or more performant? Do things load faster? Um, are our users able to get to all of the same things? Um, that testing piece is one of the things that people feel really comfortable making sure that they're, they've landed in a new space that's going to work well for them. Uh, and then there's also elements to consider depending on your organization that are things like, do you have embedding? Um, do you have integrations that you need to pull over that are perhaps a little bit different from the norm? So some of our customers, for example, will have most of their data within the cloud, but there may be a couple of places that are still on-prem or somewhere else that they need to look at. How do we connect to those? And we have a lot of offerings to allow them to do that as well, um, via like Bridge and other connectors. And then there's also other external factors in terms of how your organization is offering data to other people. So perhaps maybe your data doesn't just stay within your organization. Maybe you offer it to your customers or maybe you have other ways that people are accessing things. And so those are important things to consider as well. One of the things that I find 
really lovely around Tableau is that as our customers are migrating, we want to make sure that they have as seamless and easy and holistic experience as possible. So we will often have some of these conversations with them as they're looking at moving to the cloud. Our partners will have some of these conversations with them as they're helping them to move to the cloud. And so we really try and make sure that we're being very considered around what are all of the elements that our customers have for their data today? How do we make sure that those things are going to land in a wonderful space and that the experience for them is going to be as seamless as we can make it? All right, so well, we'll talk about a couple of customers who have gone through this experience with us. Um, Splunk is one of the customers that moved over. It saved them quite a, a significant amount of money in terms of $300,000 a year. Um, across the platform and their administration costs. Again, not having to manage um, your Tableau server instance, not having to manage, in their case, um, where that uh, instance was deployed. They had self-hosted it on AWS, so they didn't want to have to manage that as well. And moving to Tableau Cloud gave them the ability to basically say, okay, Tableau is going to take care of this for us now. Um, and then they could redeploy those resources in a different way, go after different initiatives. Um, and it, it basically frees them up to look at other things that are more strategically valuable for them. Um, they had a plan to double Tableau adoption within 12 months. Again, as they don't have to spend as much time focused on the deployment of Tableau server, it allows them to say, okay, let's focus on people having access to the data, being able to do things with that data. Um, and make our their own employees and their own teams um, more data driven and able to to be uh, more efficient at scale. And so again, being able to go after offering that data to more people within the organization. Um, and one of the things that they said that was really wonderful is that centralizing and eliminating administrative tasks was a key driver for our migration. Having Tableau in the cloud, like our other partners, is a real asset for us. We get all the benefits of scalability and hands-off administration, and it demonstrates to our customers that we are truly cloud first. Um, and so, yeah, our partnership with Splunk and helping them to migrate over was a really wonderful experience. It was very valuable for them, uh, and we're really grateful and glad that they're having a wonderful time now. And then the other customer that we'll talk a little bit about, and then I'll pass this over to Benny and he can give a great deal more detail, is Jaguar Land Rover. Um, they, again, were moving to the cloud as a part of a, a more holistic transformation. Um, they were able to identify 200 million pounds worth of business value between 2017 and 2020, uh, just initially. And then that business value has grown for them over time. And one of the things that was also really important for Jaguar Land Rover, and one of the things that we've worked with them very closely on, is how do they scale this to a larger number of, of, cust of users within, the, within their organization? Um, they started with a smaller number, and then they've added uh, more capacity and more users, and we've been able to scale with them to make sure that they're, they're growing and that that organization is working well for them. Um, and from this, they are pioneering an innovative analytic center of excellence with a new intelligent automation and data analytics center. So again, it's helping their organization to be more data driven, to be more um, innovative as they're able to, to look at things in a slightly different way than they were before. Um, I'm going to pass this over to Benny, but the, one of the things that I kind of alluded to earlier, but I want to touch on really closely before uh, we move on, is that as our customers are moving from Tableau Server to Tableau Cloud, they're going to go through that process of figuring out um, how do they move over, uh, testing to make sure that things are, are really valuable and are landing in the exact same place for them. And that's one of the number one questions that we ultimately get out of this. And that's where wisdom can help as well in terms of how do I know that my data that was on Tableau Server is now on Tableau Cloud and it's functioning the exact same way that we want it to be. So I'll pass this off to Benny. He can talk a little bit about his experience with Jaguar Land Rover and with Tableau Cloud. And uh, thank you for having me. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that. And it's interesting to see myself quoted on screen just before I take over and start presenting. So I'm just going to quickly talk through a little bit about my background, why this was such an important project. Um, and how we manage it, because we actually manage the migration in the most difficult time possible, but I'll, I'll get to that. 
So as I said briefly in the introduction, so I was at Jaguar under for six years. I'm doing two different things at the moment. I'm, I'm doing some personal consulting work uh, with a company called Data Factors, but I'm working on a nonprofit, which I've started talking about on a little bit online. Um, and if you're interested, please follow me there because I think that's going to be quite transformational for the data sector. Um, why am I interested in this project? I, I will almost certainly refer to it as Tableau Online several times. It was that's what it was called when I did it. But as I say, it was a major project um, for me when I was at JLR. We migrated 5,000 users on time and under budget. Uh, the community at the point that I left at the end of last year was an internal community with over 3,000 Tableau developers, over 10,000 consumers, and additional sites that were open to retailers and suppliers. So it was a multi-tenant um, environment. And we're getting 250 million pound a year from analytics. There's a case study on, on Tableau's website with a, with a video that goes into this in more detail. I won't have time to go into the full analytics strategy today. So why did we do it? I, I actually came up with a really blunt problem statement for this, and I, and I stick with this. If you assume that analytics equals more value, then you should not run your own platform. Because when you run your own platform, you're incentivized to ensure performance, which means you constrain usage and you restrict value. No one in any organization should be incentivized to restrict value in their organization. It's crazy. Um, so make platform performance Tableau's problem and focus on value. And this is what I used internally, and I really stand behind this. I, had, uh, I wasn't part of the team at the point where we migrated. Um, who was running the server. We were, they were a sister team, although I ended up working, running that team later. They were massively conflicted because you're focusing on performance. So you're worried about all sorts of things about what if we get a peak in usage? What if we try test out new functionality and we can't cope with it? You need to constrain all of these things. What you should be trying to do as a team supporting data and trying to get value in an organization is unleashing and unlocking potential. So, so really that's the heart of it. Um, it might be blunt, but I, but I stand by it. I don't think anyone should be running a platform where they're focused on constraining usage and usage equals value because therefore you're restraining value. But you know, there's a bunch of other reasons. Um, but off the top of my head, I, I, I brained up these um, yesterday. I don't have access to the materials when I was there before, but what we struggled with at JLR and maybe familiar to yourselves were often regular freezes. So I, many of you might not be on server core-based licensing. We were on core-based licensing what we referred to as lumpy investment. Every now and then we went back for a shed load of cash to increase server capacity, um, and that was not sustainable. Um, it was very difficult to forecast when we went to investment forums, it was, and meant we regularly had freezes on our environment, either freezes on adding new users, freezes on new projects, or, or freezes on functionality. A lot of functionality was restricted. We were scared about enabling things like WebEdit. Um, we were scared about enabling our data and explain data, and other high load functionality. We couldn't provide 24 seven support, which was quite important to us as a global organization and some use cases were prohibited. Um, we struggled with upgrades. Upgrades were a massively intensive progress and they were hard work. Um, I think there's a huge key personnel risk because actually the more your service scales, the more your implementation is incredibly bespoke and actually it's then very hard to manage that risk if people were to leave the organization. So post migration, um, we, we really addressed all of these issues. We unlocked growth, uh, all functionality was there from day one. Things that we'd really, really dreamed about, like mobile and external access, were just easier to support and unlock, but it previously looked like quite intensive security projects. They were just things we could support from, from day one. It was a real change to, to our community. It's really interesting, Benny, the, 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 um, the fact that the on-premise architecture slowed you down on innovation on, um, on letting the users unleash the consumption of data. And you said that that patching or upgrading the servers was actually a massive task. Yes. Can you tell us a bit more about this and kind of how long it took to do the actual work, the testing behind it, uh, how many people were involved, you know, every, every time you decided to do that kind of things uh, on your on-premise servers? So we tended to upgrade twice a year. Um, that was our policy and practice. It was sometimes once every three quarters, and I think we'd once did it once more, it took more than a year, because like many people, you will be in teams where other projects are happening and you have your intention to do something, but there's other demands. So sometimes we couldn't free up the resource. Uh, ended up spending about four to five people working on the migration for maybe a six week period to build up to, and, and sort of the migration, the upgrade, each time an upgrade happened. 
So it was a, it was a real intensive piece of work that wasn't always easy to justify and we couldn't always make time for. So basically going to the cloud means that you give more to the end users yeah. because you unlock ask data on mobile and all of these things. You spend less time maintaining servers because it's maintained obviously for you in the cloud. So you guys can do what they're good at, <laughs> which is not uh, or what they should be doing, not administering servers. Um, and then, um, um, and then you said in terms of licenses, it was easier to, make, to, to manage as well. Easier to manage. And I guess an extra point, um, there was less hassle from the community. So you're, you're constantly being asked if you're running server versions that are behind. When am I going to get this? This functionality has been released. It's going to help my project. That's friction you don't need. You want your team to be there and to be seen to be helping everyone in the organization, not hindering and needing to have those difficult conversations. I'm sorry, you're going to have to wait six months for this. So all of that went out the way, and the, the team supporting the server became seen as a massive enabler rather than occasionally a source of friction. I really like to hear this. It's um, um, often going from Tableau Server to Tableau Cloud, it's an IT-led project because companies are cloud first. And But for you guys, it seems to have been the, exactly the opposite. It was business. We want users to do more, to have more, the latest features of everything, and spending less time worrying about testing and, and patching and all that, just doing what you should be doing, data analytics, basically, yes. exploration. Exactly very, very good. Exactly Thank you. That. And then the last point that we did, and I'll touch a bit more on this on the next slide, um, we took advantage of this to restructure our environment. So we moved to something we codified, um, but I, I could talk to anyone who was interested in it, we moved to role and attribute-based access, and it was game-changing. It really, really, really unlocked the environment and, and enabled people to share and collaborate in a way they couldn't before. In theory, you could say we could have done that before, but we were worried. We thought about enabling certain projects to go through a process that enabled everyone in the enterprise to use them, but we didn't know the demand, so we didn't do it because we were worried it would create too much demand. So, so that was the why. What was the how? Um, this isn't a technical uh, presentation deliberately. We can talk, I can answer some questions on technical if people have got them. It's more about the change management side. Look at this as a positive. Start by engaging your community and asking them, what are you frustrated with? And you will get a long list of frustrations. We are frustrated that our versions are out of date. We're frustrated with that there's first functionality we can't use. We want to use mobile, whatever it is. They will give you their frustrations. Take advantage of the move to have something that's incredibly rare with servers, which is the ability to restructure. Everyone, whatever, your, whatever infrastructure you're talking about, you all struggle to have your business requirements when you design your server and your platform. And then when you've been using it for, for four years, it's too hard to change your, your setup. We took advantage of this at JLR to completely restructure the operating model, the way the site was structured. So it wasn't a lift and shift migration, but we were able to plan a, a site structure and an environment structure and security model that took advantage of the fact we then had four to five years experience in running Tablet. You couldn't have done that up front. So, and so we listened to the community. We came up with a security model and a plan that would address their issues. Then absolutely test, 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 because you don't want to make promises that you can't keep. Identify things like complex workbooks, scheduled events, personalized views, all of the things that are going to be bugbears. You're not going to solve everything. So go back to the community and say, we have this amazing opportunity. You have told us that you have problems with lack of capacity, not ability to share across the organization. You want functionality, you want mobile. We're going to give you all of that. We need your help to get there, and they will be part of the migration. So final, final part is to make the community part of the migration, and they will put the work in if it benefits them. A bit like something like an Office 365 migration. You can't quite automate everything, and there are some comms you give out to the community to do the final bits. So what practically happens um, in terms of timelines, because uh, it is a little bit funny, we started massive team, team flowing from, from Seattle in, in January 2020. We paused because COVID happened. Uh, we started with ha half the team that we originally had because we had difficulties. Half the team was still on furlough uh, and resumed, tested our workbooks, really started community migration in September, had two false deadlines, so I don't mind lying occasionally. We told everyone you have to finish the migration by November. By the end of the year, and we used January to mop up. But we actually used a much smaller team than we'd planned for because of COVID, and we finished on time. And um, 
obviously, um, we'll talk about testing and validation because it's not only the preparation and the execution of the of the upgrade or the migration in this case to the cloud, um, but there's a lot of tests. Uh, there's a change of architecture. Yeah. Your Tableau server and your Tableau cloud were not the same versions. Of course, so you went through a new version in the process. So how did you go about testing, making sure that everything was there, everything had the, you know, the same data, same look and feel, same performance, same user experience? How did you proceed in, uh, in with that? We had multiple levels of that. So we did, before we committed to the project, we asked for a trial environment and we tested what we thought was some of our most complex workbooks, things that would slow down, and, and we were happy then to commit to the project. Um, going through the project, we uh, we engaged professional services to help do some more testing um, programmatically and identify some issues which we worked through. We then used our community. This is back to the point around um, engage a wide audience. So we had some people in the central team doing additional testing, and we use the community to do more. We had the additional issue that we changed our security model. I actually found that very hard to test because there were we made it more complex, we got more value, but uh, we uh, engaged lots of teams to manually go through and test access with different profiles. Mm -hmm. And uh, it took time, um, but it, it was worth it. And it identified, um, it identified the issues uh, and I, I guess being honest, one of the identifies issues also that you can't solve, and then you can have those conversations with people. There were some, there were some horrendous workbooks. There were some things that I was able to turn around as I wasn't quite CDO at that point, but as a director and say, I don't support this being migrated. This is not up to scratch. We need to rebuild this. And in two instances, we had to do that. Yep. But that was something that we should be doing as a business anyway. It's technical debt. Yeah, no, that's uh, really interesting. Um, so what's um, and then uh, Jaguar Land Rover has been live now. It's been live. Uh, so the migration finished in in end of twenty twenty. Uh, the thing that I tried to recreate for this, um, so picture this in your head. Uh, we had a visualization of Matrix. Um, who owns the assets in terms of the functions? It's owned by finance, it's owned by purchasing. Who uses it? Prior to migration, you had this dark line that went down the middle. Finance is finance, purchasing is purchasing, engineering is engineering. With the new security model, the ability to open everything up, we had an organization that shared uh, massively. We went from 5,000 users to 13,000 users within within 12 to 18 months. Uh, we opened up to external use cases that we were struggling to do before. A lot of things engaged. Um, the board got much more engaged with this. And it enabled us to make that switch to say Tableau is the default. We do support everything. We do support every use case, um, and, and we're there for that. That's really interesting. So lots of benefits, and um, it well, it looks like just like you said earlier, Tableau Server was was blocking you with doing some innovation and be data driven, and clearly moving from eight thousand or well up to twelve thousand users. Uh, clearly, um, uh, full benefit. I'm sure there were ups and downs in the project, but uh, um, you guys made this, so congratulations. Uh, looks like it was a, a good one. Yeah, a really good project. And I think everyone ended up believing in it. So that there were some skeptics, but everyone preferred their jobs afterwards. Actually, managing a server isn't the fun bit. The fun bit solving business problems. So it was a really good project all around. OK, well, um, Benny, um, thank you very much for this presentation. So um, I guess it's um, time for myself now. Um, so like I said, I'm, I'm Patrick, I'm the um, head of product here at Wisdom, and I will show you how, uh, thanks to Wisdom Ops, you can um, you know, be part of projects like JLR um, and like Benny have just explained, which is you know, once you've done your preparations, your assessment, you moved your content to the cloud, well, you want to test and you want to test a lot. And, um, in, in the same way, end users don't like to test when you patch your Tableau server. They don't like uh, to test when uh, you you well when you do this kind of projects either. So what we're here to do is to support the customers, support the partners, support Tableau in accelerating these projects, which have a lot of positive um, outcome and positive reasons. Um, and what we do is we. We like to 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 say that we can help in five different ways. We can help in in more ways, but um, if we start with 
refreshing data um, extract. Now, it's a different architecture. You're in the cloud. Uh, you may access databases which are still on premise. Therefore, you need uh, to make sure that you have a gateway, the gateway is configured properly. That would be the case anyway if you're um, accessing a, a another cloud database depending on, on the driver. So making sure that the extracts are working. And if you have dozens and dozens of extracts, well, maybe you don't want to run them one at a time. Maybe you want to do this in, in bulk, right? You just want to refresh everything, make sure it's working, then troubleshoot. Again, Wisdom will uh, help you accelerating uh, validating that. The second thing is, again, change of architecture. Other documents, are they going to open with the same speed, better, uh, faster or slower? Um, you know, even if you have, even if you plan to test a hundred workbooks out of your um, uh, thousands, well, to do it one by one is an issue. And how are you going to document this process, right? So again, with Wisdom, we can uh, we can help you to to simulate the opening of a workbook as if you were a user. We will give you the evidence that it opened and how long it took as well if you need to do any of that troubleshooting. Now, Alexandra earlier mentioned that our thing is going to, to look and have the same data before and after. We call that regression testing, right? So uh, this is how it was on server. This is how it is in the cloud. Compare if data is the same, images the same, filters all the same. So again, uh, tons of regression testing, fully automated. Validating the user experience. Um, you know, when I change filters, uh, use parameters, is my content going to behave exactly the same? And again, with the right performance. So um, user experience is important. Step number four. And finally, um, just making sure that um, you know people who are using Tableau Desktop that they can still uh, publish to Tableau Cloud. There's no problems of you know permissions and security. Benny talked about permissions uh, um, earlier. Um, obviously, our solutions. Uh, you know, I could add a step number six here. Uh, do people have the same rights and uh, access the same thing? Uh, Wisdom can help with that uh, also. Right. Let me show you how, show you live how um, this is going. So Wisdom Ops is our um, desktop um, application here. And the first thing I said we would do is say uh, simulate that, not simulate, but force these data extract to uh, refresh. So you see here, I have picked three data extract, but we have been very simple to, you know, to put um, dozens of different extract. And what you want to do is when you run the test, what Wisdom will do is, hey, Tableau, go ahead and refresh these extract right now, as opposed to going into Tableau and then open these um, extract one at a time and do run now, run now, run now. Again, it's just a simple way of automating um, all this. So very quick test. I just went three uh, extract here. If I go to Tableau and I look at my tasks, not my tasks, my jobs here, there we go. We can see that I've just forced these three to, to run. And then, well, they run or they don't. These ones here will not run because my gateway is <laughs> not working properly. So here we go. And I would prove right here that I need to uh, troubleshoot my data extract. Now, the second thing is opening the viz. You moved the content. They are over there. That's great. But you have tons of them, right? So with Wisdom, you can go ahead and decide how many um, workbooks or views you want to simulate opening as if you were a user you can navigate per projects or per data sources you can say hey every single workbook using that data source i want to test i've picked 54 here uh, but we can pick you know we can put hundreds at the end remember the it's the evidence bit that is important at the end of each test we give you a report and the report will tell you i've opened the workbook it worked or it didn't how long it took. Of course, you can put thresholds to say if something takes more than five seconds, not happy with that. If there's any problem with anything, we will highlight. But you see, you have the evidence. I've opened this workbook, it worked. This view here, it worked, and so on and so on. So full evidence. Uh, we have worked with companies where the auditors, the internal auditors of the company have seen, I want to see a report packed. I want to know you've tested for real. Well, here we go. That's a screenshot of 
as if you were a user doing it yourself. So I've simulated here with Tableau Cloud opening um, 54, um, 54 views. Um, and um, here we go, full documentation of everything. Now this one is, is super good. Now, oh, and by the way, you know, I'm not clicking around everything here, but this is a no code software, right? Anybody can use this, no technical skills required. Over here, I've done a simple test of saying, hey, this is my Tableau server. This is my Tableau cloud. I want to test these 47 views as an example. And I want to test a bunch of things, 12 different kind of tests. I want to make sure it opens, look and feel is the same, the data is right, my filters are still there, parameters, and so on and so on. So validating image, data, metadata behind these workbooks. And again, same thing as always, evidence is the key here. You see an example, out of 47 views I've tested, you know, it took 800 seconds, but that's 800 seconds of a machine doing it for you, right? It's going to be accurate and documented results. Nobody, nobody needs to be um, involved, and it took less than one minute to create uh, this test. And it turns out I had 19 failures. It will tell you these ones are good, these ones are, are, are not good. And if I pick, for instance, this one here, will tell you, well, there's an issue. The data before and the data after is different. It will give you a little preview so you can tell where the data is different to help you troubleshooting. And we'll do that for each worksheet that has a problem. Second thing is the visual comparison. This is how it looked like before on server. This is how it looks like in cloud. See here it was $22,000, now it's 38,000. Clearly something went wrong somewhere. So again, we'll even highlight the graphical differences when there are some. Filters, you see that my region filter had east, south and west. Well, it turns out I had central afterwards. Again, that's why the data is wrong. Is that really going to happen between a server to cloud migration? Well, it depends what the delay is between, between moving the content and testing it, actually. But it doesn't matter. It's a machine testing all of these things for you automatically, live or um, scheduling uh, for full automation, of course. OK, this is a nice one here. You, you've moved your content. You made sure it's there. You've done your regression testing. You know the content looks exactly the same as it was before. Now you want to make sure the users are going to be happy. I have here a very simple step. Once again, no code, where I'll simulate being a user opening a viz, changing three filters, and selecting a mark. Now I'll run this test manually. And what Wisdom will do is now take over my browser and really simulate I'm a user. Now, again, no code, no Selenium, no coding of anything, just clicking buttons. And pay attention to the filters region category. See my hands in the air, no cheating. <laughs> I'm changing filters, drilling down into the data, selecting California, and at any stage I could validate if the result is right or wrong. So if I click on my report here, the one I just ran, here we go. Changing the filter, 1.8 seconds. Maybe I'm happy with that. Or two seconds, I'm happy or I'm not. And full evidence of my filters by default. And here changing the filters and so on and so on until I reach by selecting the mark on California only. So again, validating user experience is good after the migration, but super good in once you're alive, keep monitoring that your system is still working the way you're expecting. Wisdom gives you the ability to publish content from your laptop to Tableau Cloud or from, or to Tableau Server for that matter, and from Tableau Server to Tableau Cloud and from one site to another site. So again, in here it's important to ensure that the users still have the same technical ability. Here we're simulating uploading from, um, from my server. A, uh, here's a data source and same thing with workbooks from my laptop to the server with tons of different options. So there you have it in a few words. Wisdom can help you with um, the validation of a number of things, extract, opening workbooks, making sure it's the same, 
user experience, and continuing to have the ability to publish more books and data sources. And we can do that with any user that exists in Tableau. So Betty was making sure um, earlier, or was mentioning that his security model changed. No problem. You want to run this test as user A, you see the result. You run the same test as user B, you see the result. We can validate role level security that way, making sure that contents can use what they're meant to use. And the test will fail if they were not, if they don't act, uh, don't have access. So um, one way or another, we can validate the security. Now um, we do have um, we do have a few minutes to um, answer um, questions if there are any. Um, I can see that there was a few comments. That's great. Um, Elsa, do you have any questions you'd like to read for us um, while I'm looking at the list? Or Elsa, you you might be on on mute now. Um, okay, if you're not on mute, um, somebody was asking here. San Diego, San Diego was asking a few questions about uh, simulating the user experience. Um, I hope this demonstration has um, explained a little bit more how we are um, suggesting um, to do to do user validation. Of course, Tableau has those auditing reports, but those auditing reports means that you need to have somebody who has done the test manually before, right? So uh, you have 10 users who's going to test a lot of views manually, and then yes, the auditing reports will tell you, well, this is how long it took. What we're suggesting here is wisdom is you don't need to ask users to open tens and tens or hundreds of workbooks to validate things by themselves. You know, these business users have business things to do. What we're saying is let us do the validation for you on behalf of the users. So I'm not saying we need to cut the users out of everything. Of course, I'm sure many will agree the transformation project, you need to involve the end users. They know the new interface, the new buttons, and new those things. But I'm pretty sure that users can live without uh, testing all of his content, his or her content, <laughs> before going live the next day. I see Benny nodding here. <laughs> I like that. Good. OK, um, good through um, all the questions. There were quite a few comments about upgrades, uh, Benny. People, people saying how, well, for me, I can, I can patch two servers in four hours. Now, how would you answer this? I mean, I'm not saying this person is wrong, by the way, but how would you answer the, the, the how, how JLR would not patch in four hours, basically? I'm not sure. I, I, honestly, without being able to have a conversation, I'm not sure why you were able to do it faster than we were. It might be the size of deployment, might be the types of content you were testing, I don't know. Um, it wasn't something that, that might be the size of resource that you had dedicated to your server. Um, if it's the case that you've got a really good server deployment because you've automated a lot because you've got a lot of resource. That's a lot of people you can free up by by having a, a online deployment, cloud deployment. Yeah, I mean, obviously, installing a patch, there's a, there's the a technical action of running the patch, that will run for a few hours for sure. Then it depends on how many servers you have to run it, on how many environments, you know, yeah. development, test, pre-prod, prod. Uh, each environment have multiple servers. And the testing phase of it. So again, I just like would like to point that there is a, a, a depending of the organization, size of Tableau, number of servers and environments. This is a project which can be well um, longer rather than than others. Yeah, it might also be that uh, there's a lot. I don't know. Making guesses. There's a lot of Tableau deployments that are what I refer to as central. With, they're a lot easier to maintain. What um, if you want to to maximize value? Point that I made. We had three thousand creators. It's a lot harder to monitor that type of environment, so that maybe that's the difference as well. And I'd really encourage people to think about basically Tableau repla replacing a lot of Excel usage rather than just replacing business object usage as a way of putting it. Good. Um, I think there's a question for for you, Alexandra. Um, of course, now um, the, the 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 release life cycle of Tableau Server and Tableau Cloud is not exactly the same anymore in terms of number of releases um, a year. Is that something you'd like to um, to to share a bit more details? Uh, I'm not sure exactly the level of details I can share because as we evolve and we adjust to um, 
uh, working with Salesforce more closely, there will be some additional changes as well. Um, but I believe for the last set of releases that went out for everyone, uh, for Tableau Cloud, we release once a quarter. And then for Tableau Server, we release two times a year. Um, and that was done to make it easier for our customers who are on Tableau Server to be able to stay up to date with upgrades. That way we're not pushing more than they could consume. Um, and then obviously with Tableau Cloud, we're able to deploy on a more regular basis. And so we can release features more frequently. We can release updates and upgrades more frequently and make sure that our customers are on the latest and greatest and stay up to date. And, and let's say we are on a quarter where Tableau Server is, a, is not updated, but Tableau Cloud is. Mm -hmm. You, of course, release Tableau Desktop every quarter as well. Yes. Is there any problem to use a newer Tableau Desktop with the previous version of Tableau Server? Uh, we haven't run into any significant ones yet. Um, and basically that part is fine. One of the things that we are very considerate of is the fact that for our customers who are used to using Tableau Desktop and prefer that, we want to make sure that they're able to continue to be able to do that. Okay. Um, okay. Understood. I will <laughs> we'll leave it to that for the moment. Then That's great. Thank you, Alexandra. Mm -hmm. um, looking at the list here, I think I have covered... Um, most of the comments and uh, questions. Um, before we go, um, I wanted to mention the uh, next webinar that we're going to run at the end of the month. This one will be um, uh, for maybe a bit more a technical use case, but having said that, something that has high impact on Tableau content, on users, and therefore needs a lot of testing, and it's database migration. And you think of, um, of, of you know, of deployments where maybe you're running an on-premise database of, let's say, SQL Server, and you plan to move to a cloud database, and let's let's say it's Snowflake, right? So um, how um, how Wisdom can help um, with the validation um, um, of this um, of this process um, here, um, and of course, um, um, this is this is a a project which is. Um, um, not only for for um, applicable for Tableau, but um, 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 other solutions as well. So um, on-premise databases to uh, cloud dat dat databases. We've seen also companies who would do an on-premise upgrade from a maybe older, soon to be unsupported database to a new database. Worries about um, impact it may have on the data sources, on the extract, on Tableau Prep, and that sort of things. Again, wisdom can help. So uh, later this month, we'll have a new webinar. Um, it's already live on LinkedIn for registration. So we'll be uh, we'll be happy to see you there. So final slide um, for me. Thank you for everybody joining today. Hope you have uh, enjoyed um, uh, hearing firsthand from uh, Tableau. Thank you, Alexandra. Um, from a real life uh, and really big, you know, uh, customer environment being JLR. Uh, thank you, Benny. Really appreciate it to have you uh, here today. And from us at Wisdom, you've seen some of the things that the software can do to help you um, with upgrades, with uh, monitoring, with development testing, and so on. Uh, do get in touch if you'd like uh, to talk to us. Of course, you can try um, for free. Uh, we'll be happy to uh, give you an evaluation version of our software at any time. You can get in touch on our website here. Uh, myself, you can find on LinkedIn or anybody at, at Wisdom. Okay, well, have a good rest of your day, North America, evening um, in Europe and further east, and uh, we'll speak to you next time. Thank you.